Hey everyone, welcome to Board Game Essentials. My name is Kodai. Today I'm going to be teaching you... <sighs> Mission Red Planet! Mission Red Planet, you're going to be racing to explore different various zones of Mars and mining the different resources. Let me show you how to play! The general overview of Mission Red Planet is... Players are going to assume the roles of Mars-bound mining corporations in a race to explore various zones of Mars. They're going to be competing for a majority in the different zones, and they're going to mine the planet's various resources. So let's go over the objective of the game. The objective is to be the most successful mining company with the most amount of victory points at the end of the game. Players will earn points by mining resources and completing mission cards. For the setup of the game, perform the following steps in order. Connect the four pieces of Mars and place Phobos and the Lost Memorial near Mars. Construct the launch pad by adding dock pieces until the number of dock pieces equal the number of players. So in our three player example setup, there will be three docks for the ships. Place all the one point, two point, and three point resource tokens in an easy to reach pile. Sort the destination tokens into neat piles so that there will be two for each zone. Place the Ice Monopoly Global Mission face up near Mars. Shuffle up the ship cards to create the ship deck and place it near the launch pad. Draw a number of ship cards equal to the number of players and place the cards underneath the launch pad as shown. If a drawn ship has an unknown destination, shuffle it back into the deck and draw a new one. If during the initial setup there are no ship cards that go to Phobos, then place a Phobos destination token on the rightmost ship. For our example, we've already done so. Players should choose their favorite colored astronauts and gather their figures and their nine character cards. Take one astronaut from each player and randomly assign one to each ship at the launch pad. The player on the leftmost ship will be the first player and they will receive the round tracker setting and set the dial to one. So randomly, we're gonna just set this up and green will be the first player and he gets the round tracker. Randomly place one resource token face down on each zone on Mars and one on Phobos as we've done so here. Place the remaining token face down in the game box. Deal two starting mission cards to each player. They choose one to keep face down and give the other one back uh, to the mission deck. Shuffle the remaining mission cards, discovery cards, and action cards to form the event deck. Now we are ready to play. Now let's go over one game round and each of the steps they consist of. Choose a character card, resolve a character effect, land launched ships, draw new docked ships, and then lastly, advance the round tracker. So when you choose a character card, each player simultaneously chooses one character card from his or her hand and places it face down in front of them. So I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick the travel agent, but the other players do not know that. And we're gonna play it face down, uh, hopefully in shot over here. And the other players will do so as well. For the character cards, I will direct you, the viewers, to the card clarification section of the rulebook. It has any questions you might have about a certain character card and how it will play out in certain situations. I won't go over all the character cards in this video, but I will say this. All character effects are mandatory and must be fully resolved, if possible. If it is not possible to fully resolve the effect, then it should be resolved as fully as possible. The travel agent's effect, which must be fully resolved or not at all, is the only exception to this rule. Please be sure to check out the sample gameplay round at the end of this video featuring character cards being used. This brings us to the resolve character effect step. The player with the round tracker begins a countdown from 9 to 1. They will do so in a similar fashion to that of a blast-off countdown. When a player's number is called, they reveal their card and perform the action listed on that card. If two or more players choose the same card, the player with the round tracker does their action first. Then the next player in clockwise order will perform their actions listed on the card. When the revealed player is done with their card's action, the player with the round tracker continues the countdown. This will continue until all players have played their cards. So in this example I've played the travel agent when the countdown goes to three. So three! Travel agent! Her card states, place three astronauts in the same docked ship. If there is not at least one docked ship with room for three or more astronauts, ignore this effect. I'm going to decide to place my astronauts here in this ship because it will have met its astronaut capacity and will now launch. Let's go over the difference between launched and docked ships. 
A docked ship is a ship that is still on the launch pad and does not have a number of astronauts on the card equal to the number shown on the bottom. A launch ship is a ship that comes off the launch pad and will land on a certain destination during the third step of the game, land launch ships. As you can see, this is no longer a docked ship, this is launching. So this brings us to the land launch ship step now. Each ship that is launching this round will land on its destination zone, unloading all astronauts on the board to that zone. When there is an astronaut in a zone with a face down resource token, it is immediately flipped face up, revealing what resource is present in that zone. Place the ship card into the discard pile, and return any destination token on the card to the supply. So we're going to take the four that are launching to this zone, and land them over here. And this is flipped face down, but we're going to flip it face up to reveal the token. It's the one point value token. This brings us to the draw new docked ship step. During the step, this is pretty simple. Any spots that are empty in the launch pad are filled from the ship card deck. So this ship launched, go into the discard pile, and we're going to bring out a new one. Easy. This brings us to the next step, assign a new first player. During this step, the player who resolved their character effect last is now in possession of the round tracker. This brings us to the last step in the round, advance the round tracker. Slide the round tracker gauge clockwise until it lines up with the next notch. This will indicate if you have to play another round, go into production, or perform the final end game steps. So here I'm just gonna switch this from one to two. During the game, there are three production phases. They will happen after the fifth round, eighth round, and tenth round. When it is time to produce resource tokens, place one resource token in the zones that are revealed for the first production, place two tokens for the second production phase, and place three tokens for the third production phase. After all tokens are placed on the zones, players with the most amount of astronauts in a given zone earns all the resource tokens in that zone. If there is a tie for the most amount of astronauts, the players will split the tokens evenly as possible. If you cannot, then leave the token on the zone, and it will be possibly won in the next production phase. So in our example, we're going to skip ahead to the production phase, and production phase uh, is on this circle, so we're going to go there. And we're also going to scatter some astronauts on Mars, so here we go! <laughs> Okay, there's some astronauts for example. So with the revealed resources, you place tokens on them for the production phase. We're in the first production phase, so we place one. In this zone over here, we have blue winning this, so he gets this token. Green's winning this one, so he gets the one. Over here, green is winning, so he gets the one. Yellow is winning this, gets the one. And yellow over here is winning this, so sh she gets the three. However, if this had been a tie, so if there had been one extra green on there, they would just leave the token there, like that. This leads us to the final steps of the game, reveal discovery phase. This will happen after round 10. The first player flips all the discovery cards now and resolves them. We'll talk about discovery shortly. This leads us to the final scoring phase. Players reveal their mission cards and determine if they were completed. The player or players with the most ice point tokens gain points for completing the Ice Monopoly global mission. Then each player calculates their final score as follows. Add points from completed missions. Add the total value of collected point tokens. Add or subtract from discovery cards that affect certain players. The player with the highest score wins the game. Now that you know how the game will flow, let's go over certain things you will encounter during your game, such as character cards, event cards, destination tokens, and the Lost in Space Memorial. There are three types of event cards, and they are discoveries, missions, and actions. You earn these cards from playing the scientist card. Let me dig out the scientist card real quick. The scientist card is number seven. So. It says place a total of two astronauts in one or two dock ships and either draw one event card or look at one discovery card in play. Skipping the top action for right now, I'm going to draw one event card. So, the first event card off the top, and only I get to look at this. It says each player with at least one astronaut in this zone gains six points. So I'm going to be able to place this on any outer zone on Mars, and only one discovery card can be attached to one zone. 
Now let's go over destination tokens. These tokens are used in one of two ways. The first way is if a player plays the pilot card. The second way is if the ship in the launch pad features a question mark. This means the ship has no destination until at least one astronaut is loaded on that ship. The player that places the first astronaut on it gets to choose its destination from the destination tokens. This moves us to the last thing we need to explain, the Lost in Space Memorial. This is the place where players put their astronauts if they have been killed. The following are ways an astronaut can be killed. A player uses the soldier card to kill your astronaut, sending your astronaut to the Lost in Space Memorial. A player uses the Femme Fatale to replace your astronaut, sending your astronaut to the Lost in Space Memorial. A player uses a saboteur to blow up a docked ship, killing all astronauts on it, and again sending them to the Lost in Space Memorial. And for reference, this is the Lost in Space Memorial. Ah! Those are all the essentials you need to play. Alright, so here we're going to show you a sample gameplay round. I'm going to be controlling the green character. I'm going to be controlling the yellow and blue, and we're going to be using the same setup that we already had in the play through the how to play video. Yep. Yeah. Alright, let's get to the board. So, everyone choose a character card in secret, placing it face down. <laughs> Alright. I have done this already. Haha. <laughs> I have as well. <laughs> okay, so now that we've picked our characters face down, uh, the player with the round tracker is going to start the blast off countdown, starting from 9 going to 1. So I'll start that now. 9, 8. Whoa. Whoa, Whoa. buddy. Whoa there. Got it. 8. I'm playing the Explorer. And place one astronaut in a docked ship and make up to three moves on Mars with my astronauts. So, I am blue, so I'm going to take one astronaut and place it on a docked ship, Mare Serpentis, and it's going to launch. Now, I get to move three other astronauts, so, hmm. I kind of want to take this resource from him. No, I like so my I'm space move ice. One, two there. Right. And then, you know what? I'll move number three there, too, so I'm winning. So now Evan's winning that territory. Yes. All right, let's continue the countdown. Seven, six, five, four, three. Whoa, that's me! <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> so Femme Fatale says, place one astronaut in a dock ship and in one zone or ship where you have at least one astronaut. Replace one opponent's astronaut with one of yours. So basically, I got to replace one of his with one of mine. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place one astronaut in a dock ship, and I will place it here. Then I'm going to replace one. Um, I'm not winning this yet, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab that uh, guy, and I'm going to put him in uh, the dead zone, the Lost right. in Space Memorial. All right. Let's continue the countdown. Okay, so three, two, one. That's me. Yellow, at least. The pilot. Place a total of two astronauts in one or two docked ships and place a destination token on one ship, either docked or launched. So, I have two astronauts. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put one here on this Phobos one so it launches. So it launches. And I'm going to put one on this Phobos one. Nothing happens, but maybe next turn. Uh, okay, and then I get to place a new destination. So, I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path here. Uh, I'm going to take this one, Estonia, and put it here. Ooh, okay. All right. So, now that we've resolved every character, uh, we're going to land the launched ships. So, these two have launched, and we're going to land them. So, this one's going to Phobos, thereby revealing the token. Yay! And this one's going to Estonia, also revealing a token. Yay! Great. So now that leads us to the draw new dock ships. So we're gonna put these back. Yay. He's going to discard. Yay. <laughs> cool. So now we're gonna assign a new first player. So that's the player who activated their character card last, and well, that's that gonna be would you. Be me. Yes. I'm gonna move it Great. to the produce phase. Exactly. Produce. Produce. Now produce is the production thing. Phase. Production, production phase. Production. Production phase. Produce is like apples and stuff. Yeah. yeah, we're not dealing with space apples yet. All right, not yet. Okay, so we advanced the round tracker, and that leads us to a production phase. So now we're going to place the tokens on the various spots on the board that have been revealed. Okay. So we're going to do that now. That's good. Okay, so now we're going to check to see who wins each area. 
No one's here, so this token stays there. Uh, this token goes to blue. Yay. This token goes to green. Oh. Yay. <laughs> this token goes to yellow. Yay. You put it on my guy. Oh, put he it on the guy? He okay. earned it. Okay, fine. Fan Fatale earned this one. <laughs> <laughs> green has earned this one. Yay. Oh, yay. And then blue has earned this one. Yay. Yay. Oh, and then and yellow then has earned this one. Phobos. Yay. Great. So then now you're going to shift the round tracker. Round six. Round six. And we're going to do the same thing over and over again. Those are all the essentials you need to play.